Hello, my name is Joe Osborne, and I'd like to share our work on MappyLand, Fast Accurate Mapping for Console Games. I'm at Pomona College, along with my uh, undergraduate students, Nathan Daly and Lucky Lim, and this is work in collaboration with Adam Somerville at Cal Poly Pomona. MappyLand is interested in action games. We, we call action games those games where you have a character moving around in some simulated space um, between rooms that are linked in some kind of graph. What MappyLand does is to interpret live gameplay or uh, replays of pre-recorded gameplay to discover these structures just from observation uh, of an instrumented emulator. Uh, the overhead involved is only one millisecond per frame, uh, and we think that this real-time online algorithm gives us new opportunities uh, to make game AIs that are aware of the game that they're actually playing uh, specifically, uh, but, but still in a general, general way. Here's a map of the first few rooms of Castlevania. Uh, the important thing to point out here, besides that the, the maps are um, indeed accurate, is uh, this is a graph. Um, so you go from the first room to this long corridor uh, to this small room with some stairs. Uh, one of these staircases leads down into this underwater room, and the underwater room uh, has a, a, a staircase back up into the room that we started in. And, and from there you can proceed uh, through the hallway uh, to the boss of the, of the first stage. So um, we, we, we remember rooms that we visited before and merge them together um, if they are in fact the same room. This is the first, uh, uh, the first few rooms in Metroid, um, just to show that Mappy you know, can work with very large rooms uh, without um, using overly much RAM. Um, and, and there's lots of back and forths and backtracking between these, uh, these rooms in this um, playthrough. Here's a map of uh, the overworld in first dungeon of The Legend of Zelda. Um, so we can also work with a lot of rooms uh, and complex uh, graphical structures. In this talk, I'm going to talk a bit about what Mappy is, how it works, and why we think it's interesting. Back in 2017, we showed the earlier version of Mappy, uh, Mappy Land, which we just called Mappy. Uh, it was batch mode, it was a little slow, uh, and its approach to room merging was just based on visual similarity only. Um, and then we were busy for a while. Last year, 18 months ago, we started to rewrite this thing in the Rust programming language. Uh, we did some algorithmic improvements and, and with constant factor improvements as well, uh, we were able to fit um, a richer system uh, into uh, much, much less RAM usage and um, uh, about a millisecond as opposed to before it would be maybe um, you know, 100 milliseconds or, or 1,000 milliseconds per, per, per frame. We just had many fewer frames. So this is online and real time. Uh, and because it is online, it can fit into any AI pipeline that you might have. The other big advance in Mappy Land is to merge rooms according to a tile similarity measure rather than a visual similarity measure. This is an overview of the parts of Mappy. Um, the blue boxes are inputs. Um, the top three are from our instrumented emulator. Um, I guess maybe the, the, the memory state and PPU register changes, these come from our emulator. Control inputs are um, from the live play uh, or pre-recorded play, and the frame buffer is just the visual output uh, of, the, of, the, of the emulator. The green boxes are the steps that Mappy does to um, process this data and extract features, and these yellow boxes are like outputs or, or features that could then be passed on to other parts of an AI pipeline. MappyLand learns what's inside of each room, which tiles have been observed to change into which other tiles. Um, so uh, a breakable block might turn into a background tile, or a, uh, a full treasure chest might turn into an empty treasure chest, and so on. We know where sprites, objects that move around, start in each room and where they go. We also learn which rooms are connected to which other rooms, uh, as well as what parts of the world haven't been explored yet. Right now, Mappy only works on NES games. Uh, we're working on computer vision models to generalize beyond uh, the need for an instrumented emulator. Uh, the stricter constraint right now is that it only works on two-dimensional flat maps. So no layers in the maps like in um, Link to the Past, uh, no parallax. Uh, scrolling that would confuse our tile extraction right now. Um, so for platforms like Game Boy, NES, MSX, Sega Master System, this is fine. It's not a big, uh, not a big constraint. But something like Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, you you see um, multi-layered maps, and that's not something that we can currently really deal with. Because we run everything through an instrumented NES emulator, uh, we can catch 
changes in the uh, hardware background scrolling registers. We can observe where sprites are on the screen by looking at the object address memory, uh, object attribute memory, uh, and we can speculatively execute input sequences by saving and loading states. Um, and this is important to know whether the player presently has control or not uh, over the player character. As far as knowledge representation goes, we consider a screen as a grid of tile IDs uh, plus a tile ID 0, which just means a, an unobserved tile. A map is a grid of changes to tiles. Um, for example, we, we observed a change from a brick to a sky tile uh, at this xy coordinate. Um, and all maps start out with this uh, special unobserved change. So we know the difference between a, a background tile, which is a background tile because it started that way, and one which was a background tile because it used to be a block that was broken. We also record how often each tile ID transitions to each other and how often each tile change transitions to each successor tile change. And this allows us to reconstruct animation cycles for tiles. All of this uses bounded memory, uh, just bounded by the number of distinct tiles and the total number of um, observed, um, uh, the sizes of the rooms that are involved. The new feature in Mappyland has been room merging. In adventure games especially, but also in, in platformers, we, we will often revisit the same room repeatedly, either in the same playthrough because we've died and started again, or in multiple plays um, when we play the game at different occasions. We might also never see a complete room, but only different pieces of it, and we want to fit those pieces together. Um, in role-playing games, for example, you'll never see the entire world map in one straight go. You'll always be interrupted by menus and battles and things like that. The problem of aligning and matching these pieces uh, is something we currently solve using a template matching algorithm uh, with a cost function which is uh, based on whether tiles might turn into each other or not. Um, even with all this, there are essential ambiguities in games because we have often cases like The Lost Woods and Legend of Zelda uh, where just um, you, you can uh, end up going in a circle from only going straight. So it's... it's uh, it's not a problem that is solvable um, this, w without um, you know, a, lot of, a lot of other assumptions uh, stacked on top. So what we do is just to store all of the information uh, so that later on, um, more sophisticated accounts of space in games can interpret that data. Here's Super Mario 1.1. Um, it's actually the entire level, which is not observable on a single playthrough, uh, because Mario cannot walk backwards. So in order to see the entire overworld and also see the coin room, you have to play it twice. Uh, and this shows that we can aggregate multiple playthroughs uh, into one coherent and complete map. Here's an example of an ambiguity from Metroid. If you are in the top room here and you exit to the right, you'll enter a short corridor. Its right exit takes you to this bottom room. The right exit of the bottom room takes you to a different room which looks exactly identical to the short corridor from before. Uh, and that has a right exit to yet another room. So this is a case where actually the rooms are different. Um, we know they're different because they enter and exit from different places. And uh, if the player is clever or, or lucky, they might figure out that one of these tiles can be bombed, and in one of the rooms this lets them drop down um, into uh, a, a very tall corridor, a very tall room. So this is actually a tall room, not a wide one. Um, now, this is not something that we can know from the observation so far, so it's ambiguous, but it could be disambiguated in the future um, if the player were to explore um, both rooms. What's the point of Mappy? Uh, we think it's really helpful if you are writing an AI that wants to interpret what's happening in a game. So this might be a feature extraction step for reinforcement learning. Um, get a tile representation of a room rather than pixel representation. Um, know where sprites are rather than having to do object detection. Uh, this could also be part of a pipeline with other tools like Charda, work that uh, Adam and I showed at uh, Ijkai a few years back on finding physics models for game characters from observation. Uh, I think it's useful if you have an AI that wants to do high-level planning, maybe like a hybrid agent that does reinforcement learning for moment-to-moment -moment control, and then planning and, and sort of map-aware stuff for higher-level control. Uh, and finally, it gives a natural measure of novelty. If you're finding new parts of a map, that's new stuff, and we want to reward that. For AI research outside of game playing, um, 
this automatic mapping means that we can more quickly produce game level corpora um, in a way that doesn't depend on individual games, just on observations of play. It means that where we do have uh, libraries of recordings of players playing games, uh, we can also get more data from play traces. Um, and if we find a way to account for, um, uh, to avoid the need for an instrumented emulator, this could even come from YouTube or other kinds of sources. Uh, and finally, um, I think that there's a, a, a really interesting area of automated state space exploration algorithms, and we feel that this mapping component um, can, can boost those um, in, some, in some ways for, for action games. Finally, we think Mappy is interesting uh, for human players. We've had already some emails from speedrunners and people playing um, randomized ROM hacks of games for which maps don't exist. Uh, and this can also be used to add a mapping feature to an old game, uh, which we don't have the source code, um, as long as it's for now an NES game. We think that this also represents an interesting uh, AI surplus uh, that could be taken advantage of for improving the accessibility of games, uh, per uh, Batu Aitemiz's recent papers. So we're really excited about Mappy. Um, I'm looking forward to the panel to talk about it. Uh, I have a demonstration I can show of um, our sort of interactive tool and um, how Mappy sees a game, but for now, um, I'll leave it there. <laughs>